Today, we're going to answer the question, does the price you pay matter when it comes to your short-term returns and then when it comes to your long-term returns? So anywhere between one year and then looking all the way out to five years, if we're paying for expensive investments or we're buying cheap investments, how often does that actually help us looking at the price we pay? Okay, so let's get started. Let's look at this chart here. Now, there are two bars. One of these bars is going to be S&P 500 over on the left, and the one on the right is going to be small cap value. So while S&P 500 is sometimes considered large, potentially growth companies, small cap value is almost the opposite. So much smaller companies, and they're gonna be trading typically at a lower valuation because the general markets don't think they're going to grow as fast. So let's look at the price we're paying today to invest in these markets and what it has been historically. So the S&P 500 is currently, this little green teal dot, is trading at about a 23 times price to earnings. So for every dollar in earnings, people are paying about $23. Okay, great. Well, where does that land in terms of history? Well, the historical average is about 19 and it's been as high as 28 and it's been as low as about nine. And so just given its historical average, 19 to 23, that's about a 20% premium to its history. So people are paying about 20% more for every dollar in earnings for the S&P 500 currently. Okay, so it's a little expensive. How does that compare to small cap value? So smaller companies trading at a slight discount. So if we look over here in small cap value, which you can see is the historical average is about 16.9, or to use round numbers, let's just call it 17. Well, where are we today? Today, you are paying about 12.7 in price to earnings. And as far as the gap, that's about a 25 or a 30% gap. It's going from where we are today to its historical average. So while the S&P 500 is trading at about a 20% premium, smaller companies, small cap value is trading at about a 30% discount. Okay, so what does that mean for us over short periods of time? And what does it mean over long periods of time? So let's look at some very exciting charts and dig in. So this chart here goes over the one year returns given the price you pay. And so as you can see, this orange line is giving us today's price to earnings ratio for the, for the S&P 500. And as we discussed, it's 23. And if you look at that vertical axis, right, positive means positive returns, and below that black line means negative returns. And so what you've got at today's price to earnings ratio, this orange line, as you can see, there's some negative returns, but there's also some positive returns on the right and left side of that orange line. And so what does that tell us? What that tells us is over shorter periods of time, the market can go up or down, whether you're overpaying for it or not. And over shorter periods of time, price may not have as big of an impact, right? Even though the future is unknown, the price may not have as big of an impact. Well, let's look at small cap value and say, okay, how does this play out here? Well, the orange line has shifted over to the left because it's much cheaper than its history, if you'll recall. Now, in small cap value, right, what you can see is there's definitely more dots above the line. So there's more dots with positive returns because you are at almost historic records of cheapness. And so what that means is there are going to be periods where you're going to see some very high gains given it's just low prices. But some years are positive, some years are negative because we're only looking at one year. And as we've discussed in prior videos, expensive stuff can get more expensive, cheaper stuff can get cheaper. Shorter term doesn't really tell us as much as the longer term. Okay, so let's move out to the longer term. Let's look at five years. And over five year time period, these graphs start to move around on us. And so here's the one year chart for S&P 500. Here's the five-year chart for the S&P 500. And so as you can see, those dots start to shift down and to the right. Well, what does that mean to go down and to the right? It means the more you pay for investments, the lower your future rate of return. And if you look at today, go back to that orange line at about a 23 price to earnings, what you can see here is, okay, what's, what, have, what have been the future five-year returns given history? Well, they're all under 10%. And again, that's not saying that the S&P 500 can't do better. It's just saying it hasn't in the past. And what you see is there's a lot that are in low rate of return territory. Now, why is that? It's because we're paying quite a bit. We're paying a 20% premium. So how does it get back to average? Well, typically that can mean lower than average rates of return. 
Okay, so that's the S&P 500. How does that look for small cap value? So if you'll recall, this is the one year chart for small cap value. And here is the five year chart for small cap value. And you got that line over to the left, that orange line. And now those dots that start up into the left and go down into the right, same pattern as a large cap value. Because again, the more you pay, the lower your expected rate of return. But remember, small cap value is trading at a historical discount. So what does that mean? Well, our orange line's over to the left, which means the range of returns is much higher than the S&P 500. And this is, let's see, on the low end, we're at around 10%, and those numbers just go up from there. Now, these are not future returns. This is just what has happened in the past. While the future is unknown, this can give us an indication of a theme when it comes to short versus long-term investing, which is in the short term, the stock market can do anything. Again, expensive stuff can get more expensive, cheap stuff can get cheaper, who knows? But when we move to longer term, something like five years, and when you go to 10 years, the numbers just get more, just get more clear. But even at five years, what we can see is the price you pay absolutely starts to matter. And when you're paying a bit more than average prices, expect lower than average rates of return potentially. And when you're getting buying historically inexpensive assets, relative to history, you can expect pretty decent returns given what we've seen over the last several decades. And as long-term investors, it's important to know, hey, what do I own? Why do I own these assets? And am I comfortable being patient to let the numbers work for me? Hope you found this helpful. And as always, thanks for investing your time with The Personal CFO.